Fred Astaire, a legendary dancer and actor, left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Born in Wikidini 99, Astaire's passion for dance began at a young age, and he would go on to become one of the most influential figures in the history of dance. Throughout his illustrious career, Astaire starred in over 30 films, including classics such as Top Hat, Swing Time, and The Towering Inferno. He was known for his graceful and elegant dance style, as well as his ability to make even the most complex dance moves look effortless. In addition to his work in film, Astaire was also a successful stage performer, appearing in numerous Broadway shows and reviews. He was a trailblazer in the world of musical theater, and his performances helped to popularize the genre in the early 20th century. Astaire's contributions to the world of dance and entertainment have been widely recognized and celebrated. He received numerous awards and accolades throughout his career, including multiple Academy Award nominations and a special Academy Award for his contributions to the art of dance. Today, Fred Astaire's legacy continues to inspire and influence dancers and performers around the world. His unique style and innovative approach to dance have made him a true icon of the entertainment industry, and his contributions will be remembered for generations to come. Fred Astaire was a legendary actor, singer, and dancer, known for his exceptional talent and contributions to the world of film and theater. His career spanned several decades, and he left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Perhaps his most famous work is the 1935 film Top Hat, where he starred alongside Ginger Rogers. The film is a classic example of Astaire's grace and style, and it showcases his incredible dancing skills. But which of Astaire's many legendary works do you believe defined his career? Was it Swing Time, The Gay Divorcee, or one of his other iconic films? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic star? Maybe you grew up watching his movies, or perhaps you had the chance to see him perform live. Whatever your connection to Astaire, we'd love to hear your stories and memories. And stay tuned, because there are many fascinating facts coming up about Fred Astaire's life and career. From his humble beginnings to his rise to stardom, there's so much to learn about this remarkable entertainer. So keep watching and enjoy the show. Fred Astaire, born Frederick Austerlitz in Wade 1899, was raised in a creative family in Omaha, Nebraska. His parents, Frederick and Ann Austerlitz, were both born in Austria and later immigrated to the United States. They encouraged their children to pursue the arts, with Fred and his sister Adele beginning their showbiz careers on vaudeville stages at a young age. Their mother, Anne, played a significant role in their upbringing and early exposure to the craft. She enrolled her children in dance lessons and relentlessly pushed for their success. The siblings performed as a duo, and their chemistry and talent quickly gained them recognition. In the early 19th, vaudeville was a popular form of entertainment, and the Austerlitz children were heavily influenced by the performers they saw on stage. They were particularly inspired by the work of the Dolly Sisters, a famous Hungarian-American vaudeville and film duo. When Adele retired from performing to Mary in 1932, Fred initially struggled to find success as a solo act. However, he eventually found his footing and became one of the most influential figures in the world of dance and film. Throughout his career, Astaire worked with many notable dancers and choreographers, including Hermes Pan, who became a close friend and collaborator. Pan's influence can be seen in many of Astaire's most iconic routines, such as those in Swing Time and Top Hat. In addition to his work in film, Astaire's impact on the world of dance is immeasurable. He is often credited with revolutionizing the art form, bringing it to new heights of grace and technical skill. His influence can still be seen in the work of contemporary dancers and choreographers. Fred Astaire, born Frederick Austerlitz in Omaha, Nebraska, on May 10, 1899, was a significant figure in the world of film and dance. His family, consisting of his parents, Frederick and Ann Austerlitz, and his sister, Adele, were all involved in vaudeville. This early exposure to the entertainment industry shaped Astaire's career from a young age. Astaire's parents encouraged his and his sister's interest in dance, and they began performing together as the Austerlitz sisters and brother in 1905. In 1917, the siblings moved to New York City to further their careers and became known as the Astaire sisters and brother. They performed in various venues, including on Broadway, 
before Adele retired from performing in 1932. These early experiences in vaudeville and on Broadway provided a stair with a solid foundation in dance and performance. He developed a unique style that combined tap, ballet, and ballroom dancing, and he became known for his grace, precision, and innovation. Astaire's career was significantly influenced by a meeting with RKO Pictures executive, Andros Berman, in 1933. Berman was impressed by Astaire's dancing and offered him a contract with the studio. This marked the beginning of Astaire's film career, which included roles in numerous successful musicals such as The Gay Divorcee, Top Hat, Swing Time, and Shall We Dance. Throughout his career, Astaire was known for his professionalism, dedication to his craft, and innovative choreography. He continued to perform and make films into the 1980s and left a lasting legacy in the world of dance and entertainment. Fred Astaire, a legendary dancer and actor, discovered his passion for dance at a young age. Born in 1899, Astaire started performing with his sister Adele when he was just a child. One anecdote that highlights his early love for dance is when he was given a toy drum as a gift. Instead of playing with a drum like most children would, Astaire used it to keep rhythm while he danced around the room. As Astaire grew older, his parents recognized his talent and enrolled him in dance classes. It was during these classes that Astaire's passion for dance truly ignited. He would spend hours practicing and refining his technique, determined to become the best dancer he could be. A pivotal experience that fueled Astaire's desire to pursue a career in dance was when he and his sister Adele were invited to perform in a vaudeville show. The audience's enthusiastic response to their performance convinced Astaire that he had found his calling. From that moment on, he dedicated himself to perfecting his craft and becoming a professional dancer. Throughout his career, Astaire continued to push the boundaries of dance and performance. He was known for his innovative and graceful style and his work helped to elevate dance to an art form. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, Astaire remained dedicated to his passion for dance and left behind a legacy that continues to inspire and captivate audiences to this day. In the film Swing Time, Fred Astaire, as Lucky Garnet, performs an extended dance number while wearing blackface makeup. This scene was the reason the movie was not frequently televised for many years. Turner Classic Movies now airs the film regularly, often with commentary about the blackface scene. In Top Hat, Astaire, playing Jerry Travers, dances with 13 canes in the Top Hat, White Tie, and Tails production number. Astaire's perfectionism led him to break many canes during shooting, causing concern among the crew that they would run out. The scene was ultimately completed with the very last cane. Astaire, as himself, co-hosted That's Entertainment, Part 2 with Gene Kelly. In the Schubert Alley section, they danced past marquees with famous song titles. However, some of these titles were changed in the final print, such as Moses Supposes being replaced by Good Morning and the Stanley Steamer being deleted in favor of I Got Rhythm. These changes were not reflected on the marquees in the introductory sequence. Fred Astaire, a legendary dancer and actor, faced many challenges in his early career. Despite his natural talent, he struggled to find success in the entertainment industry. Born in Whitty 1899, Astaire grew up in a family of performers, but his own path to stardom was not easy. One of the biggest obstacles Astaire faced was financial instability. As a child, he and his sister Adele formed a vaudeville act, and the two of them traveled around the country, performing in various venues. However, the income from their act was unpredictable, and the family often struggled to make ends meet. In addition to financial struggles, Astaire also faced skepticism from the entertainment industry. When he and his sister arrived in Hollywood in the 1920s, they were met with resistance from studio executives who didn't believe that their act would translate to the big screen. Despite these setbacks, Astaire remained determined to succeed. To overcome these challenges, Astaire developed a strong work ethic and a relentless drive to improve his craft. He spent countless hours practicing his dance moves, perfecting his technique, and refining his style. He also began to expand his skills, learning to sing, and act in addition to dancing. Astaire's resilience paid off, and he eventually found success in both film and on stage. He became known for his elegant and graceful dance style, and his performances were praised by critics and audiences alike. 
Over the course of his career, Astaire appeared in more than 30 films and won numerous awards for his work. In conclusion, Fred Astaire's early career was marked by financial struggles and industry skepticism. However, through his hard work, determination, and creative solutions, he was able to overcome these obstacles and become one of the most celebrated performers of all time. Fred Astaire's first wife, Phyllis Potter, passed away from lung cancer while he was filming Daddy Long Legs in 1955. She was only 46 years old. Astaire had close relationships with Randolph Scott, David Niven, Clark Gable, and Gregory Peck. In the film Roberta, Astaire played the character Huck Haynes, which was a combination of the roles originally played by Bob Hope and George Murphy in the Broadway production. Sidney Greenstreet's role in the Broadway production was played by Ferdinand Munnier in the film. The original Broadway cast also included Fred McMurray, Alan Jones, and Faye Templeton. It's worth noting that Astaire's role in Roberta was just one of many successful film appearances he made throughout his long and distinguished career. Fred Astaire, a legendary dancer and actor, had several breakthrough moments in his career. In 1933, he starred in the film Dancing Lady with Joan Crawford, where his exceptional dance skills were first noticed by a wider audience. Crawford later praised Astaire, saying, he gives the impression of being the most agile man on screen. He's light, he's airy. Astaire's partnership with Ginger Rogers is another significant milestone. Their chemistry and synchronized dance moves in films like Top Hat, Swing Time, and Shall We Dance set new standards for Hollywood musicals. The famous choreographer Hermes Pan once commented, Fred and Ginger were like a poem, a song, a beautiful painting. In 1953, Astaire starred in The Bandwagon, which is considered one of the greatest movie musicals of all time. His performance in this film showcased his ability to adapt to new styles and established him as a versatile performer. Critic Bosley Crowther wrote, Fred Astaire, as always, is a superlative dancer, but he also shows himself to be a fine comedian and a singer of charm. Astaire's career continued to flourish in the 1950s and 1960s with notable roles in Funny Face, The Pleasure of His Company, and Finian's Rainbow. His impact on the world of dance and film remains influential, with his groundbreaking work continuing to inspire future generations of performers. In the 1946 film Ziegfeld Follies, Fred Astaire was set to appear in various skits and musical numbers, such as a spoof of Lady in the Dark and a minstrel number with several other stars. However, many of these ideas were not used in the final film. Astaire's co-stars in the film included Judy Garland, Gene Kelly, and Lena Horne. In The Gate of Orsi, Astaire's character, Guy Holden, is seen driving a 1931 MGJ 2 midget. Other cars in the film include a 1927 Austin 7 Swallow, a 1927 Bugatti Type 40, and a 1929 Duesenberg J for the 1935 film Top Hat, a Stairs character. Jerry Travers is seen driving a 1931 MG J2 Midget. A Stair didn't care for the big finale production number The Piccolino and handed singing duties on it over to Ginger Rogers. These films showcase a Stairs dancing skills and his ability to perform in various musical and comedic roles. His contributions to the world of film and dance continue to be celebrated and studied. Fred Astaire was a renowned dancer and actor known for his unique style and approach to his work. He had a distinct creative process that set him apart from others in his field. Astaire was known to meticulously plan his dance routines, often rehearsing for hours on end to ensure perfection. He would choreograph each move with great care, paying attention to even the smallest of details. This level of precision and attention to detail was reflected in his smooth and graceful on-screen movements. Astaire's personal experiences and worldview were also reflected in his work. He grew up in a family of performers, which exposed him to the world of entertainment at a young age. This upbringing shaped his love for dance and acting, and he brought this passion to his work. Astaire's style was elegant and refined, reflecting his belief in the importance of grace and poise. He was known for his understated and subtle performances, which allowed his talent and skill to shine through. Astaire's approach to his work was unique in that he was able to seamlessly blend dance and acting. He was not just a dancer who acted, but an actor who could also dance. 
This ability to excel in both areas allowed him to create captivating performances that resonated with audiences. His work transcended the boundaries of dance and acting, creating a unique and enduring legacy that continues to be celebrated today. In conclusion, Fred Astaire was a talented and dedicated performer who brought a unique style and approach to his work. His meticulous planning, attention to detail, and ability to blend dance and acting set him apart from others in his field. His personal experiences and worldview were also reflected in his work, creating captivating performances that continue to resonate with audiences today. In the film The Barclays of Broadway, Fred Astaire as Josh Barkley performed Swing Trot with Ginger Rogers. This number was not seen without a copy overlay until it appeared in That's Entertainment. Three in 1994, in a truncated version. In Royal Wedding, Astaire played Tom Bowen and performed a famous scene where he appears to be dancing on the ceiling. This effect was achieved using magnets to hold a picture in place when the set turned. Astaire gives it a tug when he takes it off, revealing the use of this technique. As Jerry Travers in Top Hat, Astaire and Hermes Pan created joke lyrics to the tune of Cheek to Cheek, singing Feathers. I hate feathers and I hate them so that I can hardly speak and I never find the happiness I seek with those chicken feathers dancing cheek to cheek. These examples showcase Astaire's creativity, technical skill, and sense of humor as a performer. Fred Astaire was a groundbreaking actor, dancer, and singer who significantly influenced the Hollywood Golden Age. His innovative dance techniques and on-screen charm captivated audiences and revolutionized the movie musical genre. Astaire's impact on the film industry can be seen in his unique approach to choreography and performance. According to dance historian and author John Mueller, Fred Astaire's style of dance was a game changer. He introduced a level of naturalness and ease that had never been seen before. Astaire's graceful movements and seemingly effortless style made him a standout in a time when over-the-top spectacle was the norm. Astaire's influence extended beyond his individual performances. He frequently collaborated with other leading figures in the entertainment industry, including Ginger Rogers, Irving Berlin, and Jerome Kern. These partnerships resulted in some of the most memorable movie musicals of all time, such as Top Hat, Swing Time, and The Gay Divorcee. Moreover, Astaire's impact can be seen in the way he transformed the role of the male lead in movie musicals. As film critic David Thompson notes, Astaire's characters were not just song and dance men. They were fully realized, multi-dimensional individuals. Astaire's ability to convey emotion and personality through his movements and expressions helped to elevate the status of the male lead in musical films. Astaire's influence can also be seen in the work of later performers who were inspired by his style and technique. Dancer and choreographer Michael Jackson famously cited Astaire as one of his primary inspirations, stating, Fred Astaire is the ultimate. He is the epitome of grace and elegance. In conclusion, Fred Astaire's contributions to the film industry were numerous and far-reaching. His innovative dance techniques, charismatic performances, and collaborative spirit helped to shape the movie musical genre and inspire future generations of performers. Fred Astaire, renowned for his dance skills, played the character Jerry Travers in Top Hat and Tom Bowen in Royal Wedding. Contrary to popular belief, Astaire's co-star Ginger Rogers was not shy about expressing her opinions and contributions to their dance routines. She even came up with the finishing touches, earning her the nickname Button Finder. In one instance, during the filming of Top Hat, Astaire's top hat nearly fell into a canal built on the Venice set, revealing that he had forgotten to wear his toupee underneath. Director Mark Sandrich, who worked with Astaire and Rogers on five musicals, was a physicist before becoming a filmmaker. Sandrich's meticulous planning included creating blueprints for each scene, specifying camera and actor placement. In Easter Parade, Astaire starred alongside Peter Lawford, demonstrating his ability to work well with various co-stars. Astaire's talent and professionalism shone through in every film he made, leaving a lasting impact on the world of cinema. Fred Astaire, the legendary dancer and actor, led a life that was as remarkable outside of the spotlight as it was within. He was a devoted family man, married to his wife, Phyllis, for over 21 years until his death in 1987. Astaire was also a dedicated father to his two children, Fred Jr. and Ava. 
Beyond his family, Astaire had a deep passion for cars and was known to be an excellent driver. He even had a collection of luxury cars, including a Rolls Royce and a Jaguar. Astaire's love for cars was so great that he often incorporated them into his films, such as in the band Wagon where he danced around a classic car. In addition to his personal interests, Astaire was also deeply committed to various philanthropic efforts. He was a longtime supporter of the American Cancer Society and donated generously to the organization throughout his life. Astaire also lent his time and talent to various charitable events and causes, using his platform to make a positive impact on the world. Astaire's personal values and interests often inform his work as an actor and dancer. He was known for his meticulous attention to detail and his unwavering dedication to his craft. Astaire's passion for cars, for example, was reflected in his precise and controlled movements on the dance floor as if he were driving a finely tuned machine. Overall, Fred Astaire was a man of many talents and passions, both on and off the screen. His dedication to his family, his love of cars, and his commitment to philanthropy all contributed to the rich and multifaceted tapestry of his life and work. In the film that's dancing, Fred Astaire's sequence with Ginger Rogers was reduced to two clips, due to time constraints. Originally, it was to feature various dance crazes they inspired, such as the Carioca and the Continental. However, Gene Kelly argued for night and day from the gay divorcee over top hat, white tie, and tails as a better representation of their collaboration. And on the beach, Astaire starred alongside Gregory Peck and Anthony Perkins, all of whom previously worked with Audrey Hepburn. A photo of them together on set was sold at Christie's Auction House. The Gay Divorcee is unique as it's the only film where Astaire plays a role he originated on Broadway. The stage version was a review, but the film features a backstage plot. Despite appearing in the Broadway musical The Band Wagon and the film Funny Face, neither shared the same storyline as The Gay Divorcee. Fred Astaire was a legendary dancer and actor known for his elegance and grace on the big screen. His legacy continues to inspire aspiring professionals in the entertainment industry. Astaire's advice for those looking to make their mark in the field would be to focus on perfecting their craft. He once said, the hardest job a dancer has is to look absolutely at ease. This sentiment applies to all areas of the industry, whether acting, dancing, or singing. The key is to make it look effortless. In addition, Astaire emphasized the importance of staying true to oneself and not being afraid to take risks. He famously said, I don't want to be a part of anything that's all made up. I just want to play myself. This mindset allowed him to bring a unique and authentic energy to every role he played. As for the future of the entertainment industry, Astaire would likely encourage aspiring professionals to embrace new technologies and mediums. While he may not have been able to imagine the rise of streaming services and social media, he was always open to innovation and new ways of storytelling. Ultimately, Astaire's legacy serves as a reminder that hard work, dedication, and authenticity are the keys to success in the entertainment industry. By following in his footsteps and staying true to themselves, aspiring professionals can make a lasting impact and contribute to the ever-evolving world of entertainment. In the 1955 film Daddy Long Legs, Fred Astaire, then 56, co-starred with Leslie Karen, who was 24. Astaire played Jervis Pendleton Roman III, while Karen took on the role of Julie Andre. For the bandwagon in 1953, choreographer Michael Kidd was apprehensive about presenting his ideas for the girl hunt ballet to Astaire. Kidd's concepts clashed with Astaire's usual elegant image, but to Kidd's surprise, Astaire embraced them and even contributed some ideas of his own. In The Notorious Landlady from 1962, Astaire portrayed Franklin M. Bruster. The film's theme song, A Foggy Day in London Town, had been introduced 25 years earlier in A Damsel in Distress by Astaire himself. However, in The Notorious Landlady, Astaire did not sing it. Instead, the song was presented only instrumentally. Fred Astaire was a dedicated and innovative actor, dancer, and singer who left an enduring impact on the entertainment industry. From his early days in vaudeville to his successful career in film, Astaire consistently pushed boundaries and set new standards for style and grace. 
Throughout his life, Astaire pursued his passion for dance with unwavering dedication. He is remembered not only for his technical prowess, but also for his ability to convey emotion and storytelling through movement. Astaire's innovative approach to dance, including his use of camera angles and editing techniques, helped to elevate the art form and pave the way for future generations of performers. Beyond his contributions to dance, Astaire was also a talented actor and singer. He starred in numerous successful films, including Top Hat, Swing Time, and The Bandwagon, and was known for his charming on-screen presence and effortless charisma. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks throughout his career, Astaire never gave up on his dreams. His perseverance and determination serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of creativity and hard work. Astaire's legacy continues to inspire and influence performers and audiences around the world, and his impact on the entertainment industry is truly immeasurable. In the end, Fred Astaire's story is a testament to the power of creativity and perseverance. His passion for dance and his unwavering dedication to his craft helped him to leave an indelible mark on the entertainment industry, and his legacy continues to inspire and captivate audiences to this day. In the film Follow the Fleet, Fred Astaire played the character Bake Baker. This movie is notable for Ginger Rogers' only solo tap dance scene throughout their 10 films together. In The Gate of Orsi, Astaire took on the role of Guy Holden. During the rehearsals for the song Don't Let It Bother You, a bugle call was incorporated as an inside joke, making a reappearance in future films featuring Astaire and Rogers. As for Shall We Dance, Astaire was cast as Peter P. Peters, marking the seventh of their 10 dancing partnerships. The bugle call at the beginning of the Don't Let It Bother You dance in the gay divorcee originated from playful clowning during rehearsals and became an ongoing and joke in subsequent films. In the film The Story of Vernon and Irene Castle, Fred Astaire played Vernon Castle and was depicted rescuing a drowning dog, an action that led to his toupee coming off. Astaire's on-set persona was not without its challenges, as screenwriter Alan Scott revealed in an interview. Scott described Astaire as a snob who could be easily perturbed by incorrect references. To distract Astaire from lines they did not want to lose, Scott would intentionally insert wrong lines for him to spot and criticize. In Top Hat, Astaire portrayed Jerry Travers, and his character was known for his precise dancing and elegant style. However, his off-screen persona was not always in sync with his on-screen image. Despite his sophisticated demeanor, Astaire was particular about his lines and could be distracted by those he considered incorrect. Finally, in The Towering Inferno, Astaire played Harley Claiborne and was featured in a scene where he marveled at the overwhelming height of the new building. To capture this shot, filmmakers used a mirror to reflect the miniature building's image as the camera was too large to obtain the shot directly. Astaire's character was in awe of the building size, a testament to the film's impressive set design and special effects. In the 1939 film The Story of Vernon and Irene Castle, Fred Astaire was cast as Vernon Castle, a role technical advisor Irene Castle approved of, praising his dancing skills and ability to fit into Vernon's old uniforms. Astaire's costumes became a point of contention again in the 1955 film Daddy Long Legs where co-star Leslie Karen wanted to create her own costumes. Astaire, recalling an incident with Ginger Rogers' ostrich feather dress and top hat, requested no feathers. This feather mishap was humorously recreated in Easter Parade with Astaire and Judy Garland. On August 23, 2019, Turner Classic Movies honored Astaire's film work with a day dedicated to his movies, showcasing his remarkable dancing skills and enduring impact on cinema. In Daddy Long Legs, Fred Astaire, playing Jervis Pendleton Roman III, introduced a dance he believed would become a sensation, the Slewfoot. However, it didn't gain the popularity he had anticipated. In the film On the Beach, Astaire, as Julian Osborne, is portrayed as British but uses his usual speaking voice, while several Australian actors attempt American accents. It's noteworthy that none of the American actors return the favor. When it comes to Top Hat, Astaire, as Jerry Travers, is recognized as the primary choreographer, with Hermes Pan overseeing large production numbers. Pan would often rehearse the Ginger Rogers part when they were creating the Astaire Rogers dances. Once the routine was set, they would demonstrate it to Rogers. Fred Astaire, famous for his dance skills 
showcased his talent in the film Top Hat as Jerry Travers. This marked the first time a screenplay was written specifically for him and his dance partner, Ginger Rogers. Astaire was also known for his political views, being a conservative and a lifelong supporter of the Republican Party. Along with other celebrities, he was a founding member of the Hollywood Republican Committee, although he kept his political beliefs private. In addition to his acting and political pursuits, Astaire founded Ava Records, named after his daughter, Ava Astaire McKenzie. The record label, while not as well known as his film career, was another example of his diverse interests and accomplishments. Fred Astaire, born Frederick Austerlitz, made his film debut in Flying Down to Rio as Fred Ayers. Originally, the film was meant for Dolores Del Rio, but it became famous for pairing Astaire with Ginger Rogers. Their chemistry was undeniable, particularly in the karaoke dance number, which led to nine more films together. In 2000, a tribute album titled Let Yourself Go Celebrating Fred Astaire was released, featuring Stacey Kent performing all the songs. This gesture speaks volumes about Astaire's influence on music and dance. In Roberta, Astaire, playing Huck Haynes and Rogers' dance to I'll Be Hard to Handle. The routine was so impressive that it was filmed in one take. This ability to deliver flawless performances underlines Astaire's unparalleled skill and professionalism. In the Barclays of Broadway, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers shared the screen for the tenth and final time after a gap of 10 years since the story of Vernon and Irene Castle. This MGM film was their only one together outside of RKO, and the only one in color. Fred Astaire also starred as Don Hughes in Easter Parade, with a radio adaptation airing on the Screen Guild Theater on March 22, 1951, featuring Astaire and Judy Garland reprising their film roles. In Daddy Long Legs, Astaire played Jervis Pendleton Roman III, alongside Leslie Caron. Karen, a ballet dancer, recalled Astaire's advice, Kid, you're gonna have to do what I do, because I sure don't do what you do. These roles showcase Astaire's distinctive style and his impact on the world of film, without the need for elaborate adjectives or flowery language. Fred Astaire, known for his smooth and agile dancing style, played the character Tom Bowen in the 1951 film Royal Wedding. He also starred alongside Keenan Wynn in Finian's Rainbow in 1968. In contrast to his graceful on-screen presence, the film Carefree marked the first time an Astaire Rogers film failed to make a profit, losing 68,000 for RKO. Astaire's dance partner, Sid Caris, was married to singer Tony Martin. Martin could distinguish which of her dance partners she had been working with based on any bruises she had. If Sherage had bruises, it was from the physically demanding choreography with Gene Kelly, while Fred Astaire's routines were smoother and less likely to cause injury. Fred Astaire, known for his exceptional dance skills, played the character Josh Barkley in The Barclays of Broadway. The film was initially intended to reunite Astaire with Judy Garland after their successful pairing in Easter Parade. However, due to Garland's struggle with drug addiction, she was replaced by Ginger Rogers. The original title, You Made Me Love You, was inspired by one of Garland's hit songs. In Follow the Fleet, Astaire took on the role of Bake Baker. This film was a significant success for RKO, earning a profit of over 20 m in today's value. It was the second most profitable film featuring Astaire, and Rogers surpassed only by Top Hat. Astaire's friendship with Irving Berlin began during the filming of Top Hat. In this film, Astaire portrayed Jerry Travers, and the two maintained a close bond until Berlin's death in 1989. Their collaboration resulted in many memorable musical numbers. In the 1936 film Follow the Fleet, Fred Astaire, playing Bake Baker, found himself in an unexpected fight scene with co-star Randolph Scott. Astaire, with no prior experience in movie fight scenes, accidentally bloodied Scott's nose. Scott, however, remained calm and unbothered, easing Astaire's embarrassment. Later, in Funny Face, Astaire took on the role of Dick Avery. To ensure both Astaire and Audrey Hepburn's participation, producers cleverly told each that the other had already agreed to the film, knowing they wouldn't want to miss the chance to work together. On the Beach featured Astaire as Julian Osborne, alongside notable co-stars like Gregory Peck, Ava Gardner, and Anthony Perkins. This post-apocalyptic drama was significant for its star-studded cast, with Peck being an Oscar winner 
and Astaire, Gardner, and Perkins being Oscar nominees. In the 1935 film Roberta, Fred Astaire played the character Huck Haynes. Interestingly, Astaire's co-star, Irene Dunn, who played the film star, earned an impressive income from this movie. Thanks to her agent, Charles Feldman, Dunn received not only her salary, but also 15% of the gross once the film's revenue doubled its cost. As a result, Dunn made more money through her percentage deal than her salary for this film. Meanwhile, in the 1936 film Follow the Fleet, Astaire portrayed Bake Baker. Notably, Irving Berlin wrote the song Get Thee Behind Me, Satan for Astaire, and Ginger Rogers' previous movie, Top Hat, but it was dropped from that film. Later, in the 1952 remake of Roberta titled Lovely to Look At, MGM purchased the prints and negatives of the original film to prevent competition with the remake's box office potential. As a result, the original Roberta remained out of sight for decades until the mid-1970s end, when it was reissued due to the nostalgia boom after the release of That's Entertainment. This made Roberta the only Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers film unavailable to be screened in revival houses, making it a rare gem for movie enthusiasts. In the film The Barclays of Broadway, Fred Astaire as Josh Barkley, saying they can't take that away from me to Ginger Rogers, a song they had previously used in Shall We Dance but never danced to. Rogers suggested they dance to it this time, adding a new dimension to the song. Interestingly, while all music and songs in Astaire's films were pre-recorded, his tap dancing was also dubbed, but with a unique twist. Astaire would overdub his taps, recording them live as he danced to the previously recorded taps. In the bandwagon, Astaire played Tony Hunter, a role originally from a 1931 Broadway musical. However, the film only borrowed the title in some song with entirely different stories. A similar situation occurred in Funny Face, where Astaire had appeared on Broadway in 1927. The only time Astaire got to recreate a role on film that he had originated on Broadway was in The Gay Divorcee, from Gay Divorce on Broadway. This demonstrates how Astaire's career spanned various mediums, always bringing his unique style and charm. In Top Hat, Fred Astaire's character, Jerry Travers, danced with Ginger Rogers in the iconic Cheek to Cheek number. Initially, there was a disagreement about Rogers' dress, which was heavily adorned with ostrich feathers. Due to its impracticality, the blue dress was replaced with the white gown Rogers had worn in the gay divorcee. However, Rogers insisted on wearing the blue feather dress, causing some difficulties during filming as feathers started shedding. A stare later gave Rogers a locket with a gold feather to mend their relationship, leading to her nickname Feathers. In the bandwagon, Astaire's height difference with his dance partners was addressed. To minimize the height disparity with Sid Caris, Sherry's wore medium height heels and Astaire wore a hat to offset their heights. Roberta featured a unique wooden floor for the I'll Be Hard to Handle dance, which allowed Astaire and Rogers to tap and produce audible sounds. Their enjoyment was evident as their laughter was unscripted. The shedding feather scene was later recreated in Easter Parade with Judy Garland. Let's take a moment to talk about the incredible career and impact of the one and only Fred Astaire. Known for his extraordinary talent in dance and acting, Astaire left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. His work continues to inspire and captivate audiences, even today. Whether you're a longtime fan or new to his oeuvre, we'd love to hear your thoughts on Fred Astaire's legacy in the comments below. What do you admire most about his performances? Which of his films or dances do you enjoy the most? Share your memories and opinions with us, and let's celebrate the life and career of this remarkable entertainer together. If you find this discussion intriguing, please don't hesitate to like, share, and subscribe for more content that explores the lives and works of the creative spirits who have shaped the entertainment landscape. Your support helps us continue to create engaging and informative content for you to enjoy. Thank you for joining us as we reflect on the enduring legacy of Fred Astaire. We can't wait to hear what you have to say.